Well today as you can see we're going to go to Bear Glass and uh, it's a little mild track and I'll talk about it as we go. We've parked a car up in Bluff Glen, uh, the Hidden Valley, or the Point, or the Port, or the Pert, depending on what you read. It's a lovely little shelter spot, and um, put it on your list to do to visit. Sarah Christian done a lovely little book on the place. So if you come up, you get all that first because it will tell you a lot about the place before you come in and the idea what to look at and what you're looking for. I think it's about six pound. I'll show you a picture of it. I was telling you about this little book of Sarah Christians. It's called From Travail to Tranquility, a source history of Glendew and Balaf. I think it's about six pound. I've taken the liberty of taking some information from it. I hope she doesn't mind. She's very passionate about the area. Very passionate. All the proceeds go to the Laugh Heritage Trust. So it's not wasted, folks, it's not wasted. Said so the hills around here are called Slough Kern, Slough Do, Slough Frigain. Plantations to Laugh. There's one that didn't make it away. Somebody's feast. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. There's quite a few little ruins up here, and which is my interest, of course. It's in one of my books, I'm not sure which volume is in. And I took some photographs as I like to it. And the photographs can add more than the video. 1st of September 2021 and I have to be on again not a soul about I said to my sister I'll take her somewhere for a walk on Friday so maybe we'll come up here again I don't know whether she's ever been up here I always find that quite amazing being Manx I say to her have you been to such and such or such and such and now yeah, where's that and sometimes it's on their doorstep but they've been to America Disney World and these other locations in the world, but just not done the Allen Island. Well, like most people, I've been off the Allen Island for two years. Not bothered really, I live over here. Born here, reared here, stay here. I hope my dogs come back to live sometime soon too, which will be great. And I've got no reason really to go. Except my other daughter, who's in Canada. Although she is living somewhere like the Isle of Man in Canada. I can't remember to tell you about this place or not, because I forget anyway, we'll tell you again. The, um, it's about 23 acres, it's owned by the Manx government. They've leased it to the Manx Wildlife Trust in 96 for a 999 year lease. Several families up in the Glen here. Um, most of them left before the 1930s, although Hector Duff, one of our fabulous manxmen, he only died last year. His mother was born and lived up here in one of these sultans, as he told me once when I visited him. And he used to come back with his mother, and uh, she would regale tales, I suppose the place and what happened here in their youth and um, what does it mean a little boggy marsh ground or dark depending on your point of view and it would be quite dark here in the winter time if you can imagine these hills the sun would never get really get above them other side so hidden in more senses than one I feel so I'm trying to remember the names of some of the people lived up here or Shimmons up here Boyd's We've got relatives down in um, Patrick still. And they regale memories of their family moving to Southfield from the Kirk Michael and fetching their sheep over the hill here in the summertime for grazing. I 
after they left and moved out. There was Shimmons, as I said, also was the Stevens. I've got a list, I've got some information from Sarah's Booker. Stop down somewhere and give you a bit of a rundown on it. But listen to me, come out and do it. Again, you know, it's not messed up yet. No trespassing, it's a footpath. Just leave no rubbish about, shut the gates. Leave it the way you'd like to be left for yourself. As you move further into the glen, civilization stops, doesn't it? The noise of human beings. All we've got now is the sound of the land. It's birds. We can just lost some leaves in the trees. Just as they start to turn now to them. Their brown shade, the sugar start to change in them. Just on cue. If you haven't done so already, check out the other YouTube videos. There's about 30 odd there now. All on the Isle of Man. Get lots of nice comments, which is very encouraging. Because some people remember these places, but we never see them these days or videoed or filmed anymore. It's always the same old trash they put out there. No disrespect, but you know, Craig Niche, for goodness sake. We have places probably prettier. This is one of the places I think is a reflection of Manx life. And it would have been a community. So the track's about a mile long. It's not particularly difficult or arduous. It's not even very hilly. Although both sides are very hilly, as you no doubt will see. Not been out as much this summer as I would have liked to have been, to be fair. Things just seem to overtake you, don't they? And you make plans and then something changes it. So I'm not sure when the kids go back to school. But if you haven't gone back to school and you've seen this, why don't you fetch them up here? Get them off their phones, eh? Show them where your ancestors used to do or where they came from. They'll moan and groan and say it's this and that the other, but I'll tell you what, they won't forget. They won't forget. There's a couple of ferns up here I want to try and find, which are known for the area. Some of the birds I've heard mentioned are linnets, which have a lovely um, sound and they chatter. Not many flowers left now because we've come to the end of that season really. Just greenery. Most of the folks lived here would have had an odd occupation. Like one guy was a nail maker, family were. Some guys fished, went to Kinsale and back. And um, while they were away fishing, the wives obviously had to look after the land and the animals. It wasn't about being rich up here, it was about living. I think sometimes we have lost that ability, haven't we? Faithful companions with me again. I do have a lead for her, but she doesn't really need it. She's petrified of animals, which is rather strange for a sheepdog. As I said, it's not too arduous a trick or a trek up here. And a, a nice cooling breeze. The old ashes are in fine belly form this year. They tell me we're in for a bad winter. Well, 
That's what they're saving the ash berries anyway. Well, there's a two or three areas you can visit when you're here. There's a often called the first place you get to. And then there's another section further up the glen. I'll try and do both, tell you a bit about them when we get there. Also when I was up here, I do get inspired occasionally. And um, I was inspired to do a story up here called Boogly the Goat. And uh, when you hear me do it, you'll probably realise, oh yeah, I can see why he was inspired to do it. Hey, oh, you are here. And uh, it says there we are permitted to use a path, but it's not a public footpath. So please be careful. The first ruin you'll come to is the one that's been protected. When I was here last time, there was a lovely big slate flag over the river. There's a crossing. It's still here or not? No, she's gone, I'm afraid. And today we've got the cattle for company too. Hello boys and girls, how are we doing? I was used to dogs anyway. Looking well boys, looking well. So while we're here we'll have a poke around this vault in here. I'm trying to remember who it was dedicated to. I think it was Louisa Pass. Oh, there we are. No, sorry, Margaret Pass. Uh, Mr Pass was did a lot of work with the museum, worked there for many years and when his mother died she left some money to us, some sort of a, a monument for herself I suppose. So they decided to rebuild this which is absolutely fabulous. So we'll have a look inside see what we think of it. Yeah, done well. That's how the chimney would have been. Feathered up to the roof. I'm not sure where these woodlanders would have been the originals. Or where they put here. Anyway, they're still looking like they're doing a decent job. The birds have made use of it as well. They've always got to scratch their name on the fireplaces, haven't they? And um, one of the little people's joined me today. He looks quite happy too. So this is the little room that was um, done up. This one may be called the port. Uh, could be Anne Shimmons one, I'm not sure. I'll sit down somewhere, we'll have a chat about it. They've topped the walls with concrete and topped the chimneys, which is all you really need to do in these things. Built up a couple of walls as well, and um, it's been done a few years now 20 years maybe. Still here. Obviously, quite a shy beast. Now, anyway, let's go up a bit further, see what we can find for you. Some of the family names from around here, as I've already mentioned, I'll mention them again. They're famous for the Killips, Boyds. Stevens, Shimon, Quail, even a Kelly. They get everywhere, don't they? Kane, all Manx names. All got a memory of the Alaman. Tuck Mill, I think, would be by the stream, I guess. It's a bit overcast today, but it does suit videoing better than bright skies and shadows. I love to hear the water trickling. So 
Newton has been kind enough to cut the gorse away from us. Sycamore ash seem to be the commonest trees around here. Play tricks on you, isn't it? It's a few years since I've been here, but I thought I would remember it. This is a toddler's viewpoint of the world. Me, I suppose. It would be a rather stream for a reason. We're not going right up the top. Not today, anyway. Left over now. Definitely, well, either this would be a mill, isn't it? Well, if it wasn't, I don't know. There's a little hole there going out through the river. Changed a bit since I was last here. Not too much, though. Not too much. A decent uh, view of the truck mill. I imagine the water must have come in through there into this what would be called a race. We'll would travel down through here and we'll be here somewhere I guess and back into the river. That's the heather gleaming in the sunshine or lack of sunshine. They talk about a thing called the lemon scented fern. Not sure what else is it? It doesn't smell like it's lemon scented. That's all day with berries too, isn't it? So maybe that's true. It may be harder than we think. Have a look at that in a minute. Last time I was here there was a tree growing in the middle of it. So now we're trying to walk over to the ruin without tripping up. A good idea of the area from there too. Sitting on the old sycamore tree. So here we are, Hidden Valley, eh? There have been 20 families over here at one time living in these little places, making a living, a real little community. Nobody, just me. A 
There's Penny waiting patiently. Come on, Dad, I've had enough of this now. Let's go and do something else. Not a bad idea, Penny. Not a bad idea. You know, the last time I was up here, there's a few old cogs doing around the place. It's obviously proved there must be some sort of mill here, but I don't see any of them today. Maybe they've been removed for safety. Okay. How would you know? Eh? How would you know? Anyway, we're heading back now to the um, main house. Need some little tales about the place. We can get, as I said, far more from Sarah's book than I can remember. That would have been a garden, I guess, at one time. Sheltered. Built into the bank. No flowers in there, though, folks. Potatoes. Well, I was telling you about this little book of Sarah Christians. It's called From Travail to Tranquility, a source history of Glendu and Balaf. I think it's about six pound. Pinching some information from the book, which um, I'm very grateful for Let me be able to do that. But I have got some other information too, which I'll give you a bit of a, a rundown on. Yeah, the place is abound with hen harriers, ravens, stone chats, linnets, peregrines and so forth. Even been a heron. And the mill was used for flax apparently, which would have produced linen. And I must have said also, Hector Duff's mother was the last person to be known to live here. And I'm not sure whether this was her house or not really. There's a bully, a, a, bully, a gully above here. On Slough Kern called Gleanna Halana. Excuse my um, pronunciation. It's a little ravine up there, two earthworks, of pent pentagonal enclosures. And they would have been here from the beginning of time, I'm sure. Old men did say that the port was a fort for the Danes, and young people were warned to avoid here for fear of enchantment. Urns, too, I said, have been uncovered on the site by rabbit trappers. Apparently if you sit still long enough, there's tales of little white dancing goats. I think that may have something to do with drink. In 1899 there was a sail on Glen Dew, held by Crystal Brothers. And uh, there was 12 acres, it was probably Mr John Boyd. It was a small attendance, the bidding started at 150. And uh, was knocked down to Mr William Boyd of Sartfield for £200 which was considered a reasonable figure, as the fences of land were not in good order. So rather than just take my word for it, and my opinion, why don't you come and see it yourself? I will hardly recommend it, I really do. Anyway, I'm back now for some lunch. Do a bit of video on the way down the path to show you which way we came in. And hopefully you'll find it easier. I always find with these places, when you go back over the path you come up, it always seems shorter. It can't be any shorter. In the day it's the same distance. Anyway, that's the end of that little excavate up to Hidden Valley. Hidden no more, I feel. So, next weekend, picnic, kids, out you go. You will enjoy it. Let's go plug and sell this book again.
get hold of it. I'm sure you'll be able to find it on the web somewhere. Or if not, the Bath Heritage site have copies. And we're coming to the end of the track now. Your civilization again. So uh, if you're with me now, coming out of track, comes out onto the road, just comes past the old Ravensdale Hotel. So you carry on past the road, it goes up over Druidale, and you park up on the Bluff Glen. I did try the Druidale Road, but unfortunately it's blocked or shut off for some work. So I'll head off back home now. Thank you for joining me. Check back again. More to do. More to do. And that is the end of the road just down there. Goodbye for now. And goodbye from Penny as well. <laughs>